On a previous video, I set up one of these SATA to IDE or IDE to SATA adapters on this board, on this test rig that I was building. Uh, basically, because I needed an extra IDE port, and this board's only got four on it, so I thought, well, I'll use the the IDE port, convert that to a SATA port, and then I can connect up this cheap 32 gig SSD and use that as the boot drive because the boot drive didn't need to have uh, really high transfer rates or anything like that I just wanted something that would boot up a bit quicker than a mechanical hard drive since I did that video I've installed Windows some drivers and a few updates and whatnot service pack and straight away I noticed that the, the system just didn't run right it, you know, when you've been working with PCs for a long time you tend to get a feel for things and sometimes things just don't feel right they don't respond right there doesn't necessarily have to be any kind of obvious delay or, or lag on the system you, sometimes things just don't feel right and, and in this case there was also some obvious quite serious delays and lag and um, what I've done is narrow it down to this uh, obviously the first thing to try is unplug this and try it on one of the onboard ports and um, as soon as I did that everything was working fine since then I've also tried using one of these because I've got a, a selection of different adapters and these have actually got different chipsets on I've noticed and same with these I couldn't use these because I've got this 90 degree angle on them but again these have also got similar chipsets so the red ones all have the same chipset I've got a, a selection and the blue one and the green one they also have the same chipset uh, this was a cheap eBay purchase and this is actually a Lindy branded one um, what I actually found using this one is that all the unresponsiveness and all the lag and all the the lockups that I was uh, experiencing with the piece and just the general feel of it all those problems went away uh, and it it ran as it should and I've also tried as I say because I've got two of these I've also tried both of these just you know to eliminate that it's not necessarily uh, the chipset it could be one of the cards is a bit iffy one of the uh, adapters it's not that at the minute I'm actually cloning one of these SSDs to another just to eliminate that because I've noticed the performance of these I mean I didn't expect it to be great but it really isn't great so I've cloned that I think that's uh, just about finished and I'm going to try and boot off of that and just see do a comparison of the uh, speeds and see see how that runs I've also got a decent Samsung SSD here it's, a, well, it's an older model but it's an 850 EVO they're pretty quick and um, a standard desktop SATA hard drive I might have a go with one of those see how that performs just out of interest so now this is cloned I think the first thing I'll do is boot the system up with one of these on and just show what the problem is and what's going on okay so I'm starting this system up it starts up reasonably quick but it's definitely slower than it should be for an SSD Our Windows screen there and we get this .NET framework warning because I've installed the video drivers but I've not run all the updates yet so we can just ignore that that's not causing the problem I'm just gonna let this settle down for a minute wait for the hard disk activity light to go out just in fairness because that gives the the operating system a bit of a chance to sort itself out okay so if I now click say Internet Explorer and then File Explorer and now I try and get to the start menu you see it's gone all very laggy all unresponsive especially if I'd have tried to do that straight away just as soon as those options to click those appeared it, it, I wouldn't have stood a chance now if I go to the start menu now and all pro, well, I can't even do that because you can see already I've got the wrong eye, I had the wrong cursor there because it was lagging. If I click all programs, it should have just brought that list up instantly and this is an SSD and then you see there was a bit of a delay there. If I try and do that right after Windows starting, which I'll do now, I see even just going to there to restart, it, it's just the whole thing is just unresponsive now can't drag these windows around 
it's and then they've just decided to move so it, it's just not running right at all it doesn't feel right at all so if I now shut this down and even the shutdown it just it's just unresponsive and it's slow it, it should shut down a lot quicker than this there's virtually nothing installed on this system now I have actually tried uh, running this one as well with this one I actually ended up with Windows falling into recovery mode um, as soon as I plugged it back onto one of the mainboard connectors it was fine now one of the problems with this could be that it's all crusted up with um, probably what looks like solder flux uh, the, the second time I tried this it didn't even recognize there was a disc on it so there's either a problem with this one as well or it's, it's the, the solder flux on it that's causing some issue um, unfortunately I've got two more of these with the same chipset these are the angled version so it may be that these just can't be used because they're not very good so now I'm going to take out this red one and I'm going to replace it with one of these blue ones which has got a different chipset on it and this will this will have started up a lot quicker than it did the last time and now the hard drive activity light has gone out it's not doing anything more it took quite a few seconds on the other drive for that to well the other adapter for that to to go out and I can instantly click all of these they come up straight away they're not lagging if I drag them around I can go to the start menu I can click all programs and I instantly get a list so there's definitely a problem with that adapter so I've tried this with a couple of these blue adapters uh, these have got a different chipset to the red ones uh, a couple of these so the red ones or any of this chipset don't seem to work or well, not very well if they do work at all uh, the blue ones seem to be fine there's no issues with lag or the machine going unresponsive so they're they're obviously okay I've also obviously tried the second SSD just to eliminate a faulty SSD being the problem I get exactly the same um, results works fine that works fine with with the blue ones it doesn't work fine with the red ones so I've tried a second one of these SSDs to eliminate that from being the problem I get exactly the same results with this if I use it with either the red uh, SATA adapter or the blue SATA adapter same results the red one I get performance issues lag uh, locking up and just generally it just seems to be slower the blue one it seems to be fine so same as the one that's in here and also if I use this on the onboard ports again I get the same results although I do get much better performance with the onboard ports than I do through the IDE port which you would expect although having said that these do seem to top out at about 150 megasecond ish read rate and the write rate even on the onboard SART is only about 50 megasecond so they're not brilliant so you would expect to get about the same out of an IDE port but I've found that you don't the the onboard IDE through the SATA adapters seems to top out at about 40 megasecond on the write speeds and about 70 80 on the read so connecting the SSD up through here really does degrade the transfer rate more than I would have expected I would have expected to still get you know, well above the 100 megabytes, probably 120 megasecond out of the IDE port uh, rather than 7080. So I'm not sure whether these are capped to only run at some of the older IDE speeds rather than the, the ATA100 and 133 and all that. I'm not sure what the problem is. But there is a, a definite performance loss. I think the write speed is obviously, again, it's down to the SSD and there's probably some other overhead which is causing it to be about 10 megaseconds slower on here than it is on there. But the read speed I would have expected to be higher. So you can see here I've got some speed tests I've ran. This is uh, the blue line which is the read speed and the orangey red line is the write speed. And you can clearly see here that's very flat and that's usually an indication that something's capping the transfer rate or there's a bottleneck and in this case the bottleneck is clearly the IDE to SATA adapter because I, I get a much higher transfer rate 
when I'm using the onboard um, starter ports. And again here you get this very random up and down with these SSDs and I've found that this happens no matter what it's connected to, even if it's connected to the internal SATA port. So this problem here, with this fairly erratic um, ripe speed, appears to be a problem with those SSDs. So I don't know if it's trying to do some kind of background tidying up when files are being written or what's going on, but it, it does that regardless. Um, you'll see here, this is another another one with the blue drive. It's, the, the graph's slightly off here. And you've got again about an 80 megasecond limit and about a 40 megasecond limit. And this up and down bit's just moved somewhere else uh, further along in the test here for some reason. Usually it does it at the start. And again, there you, again you can see fairly consistent. This is fairly consistent as well. The IOPS does seem to vary quite significantly. I don't know why that is. So you've got 340 on the right on that one and then on this one you've got 240 so I don't really know why it varies so much and this is with the onboard SATA connection and again you can see here the write speed is capped still it's gone up a little bit so I'd say it's somewhere between 45 and 50 it seems to be slightly higher than when it's through the IDE adapter but it is still capped so that limit is clearly a limit of these cheap SSDs are clearly only capable of about a 45 megasecond write speed which is pretty bad but the read speed's gone up significantly we're getting between 100 150 plus as you can see there so the IDE adapters are clearly causing a, a limitation to the transfer speed now I've also while I've been looking at this I've noticed another problem which is quite a serious one and that does need fixing right away all right now that's dealt with we can get on with some more work so just to illustrate this issue with the speed variance at the start of the disk I'm just going to run this uh, read write test again I've put both the drives in at the moment they're both connected both the 32 gig SSDs and I'm going to run this on the second one, which is actually drive D. And you'll see how it, it goes very much up and down for a while. And a bit choppy. And then it will just do a normal read. Uh, this is actually on the uh, onboard SATA controller as well. So this, again, it illustrates that this particular issue is not a problem with these SATA to IDE adapters, it's, an, it's just a property of these particular SSDs, probably because as I say, they, they are very cheap ones. And if you wanted any proof that setting up a separate machine for doing hard drives is a good idea, then there it is on the screen right now. I think because I've set this second drive up with a drive letter in Windows, it's basically got confused, and now this drive won't boot, and that was the system drive. Um, so I'm going to have to try and put this one back in now instead and hope that it will boot back up. I initially thought that maybe the second SSD that I've plugged in to do some testing with, because it's on the IDE port, I thought maybe this has taken priority. But I've checked in the BIOS and the, the original 32 gig is still set as the primary boot, which is good because I don't want the BIOS to start switching the drives around depending on what's plugged in and what's not which some BIOSes do, which is also annoying. And this is exactly why I don't want to put a hot swap rack in a machine that I use on a daily basis for doing disk checking and this kind of thing, because it, it just causes problems. So this is uh, booting up again now. It's picked up the drive, the, the other 32 gig. It's picked up the Evo SSD, and it's actually booting now. So something... Uh, Something has screwed the boot loader up or the boot sector or something on that. So what I want to do here is run the same file transfer test that I've done on the other drive, just as a comparison. So as this is a new drive, the first thing we'll need to do is initialise the disk and create a partition, which we can do in the computer manager. Uh, we'll go for an MBR. Um, new simple volume. 
we don't really care, give it a drive D, quick format. You have to have a formatted volume for the file speed check to work because it actually writes a file to the disk. There is another speed test, there's a read and a write. The read just reads raw, raw sectors from the disk. The problem with, with that test is if you want to do a write test it actually has to have a blank disk because it writes out to the raw sectors which obviously would remove all your data. So if we run HD tune again. Yes, this is a trial version. This is something I have been meaning to purchase because I've made quite a lot of use of it. It's a little bit expensive for what it is, but I've made so much use of it, I, I want to buy it just to support the developers. So, file benchmark and the Evo selected, and we'll see what we get. And you can see there, that's, that's running pretty quick, but again, it's capped. Now, the write speed is capped much nearer to the read speed on this, which I would expect because I think these drives are at least 400, 450 megasecond write and I think they're 500, 550 read so I'd expect these to be pretty much together uh, which suggests that the IDE adapter does cause a bit, a bit more of a loss in transfer rate for writes over reads and the IOPS is uh, obviously the difference between this decent Samsung and the other one, the other one was I think it got up to about 300, 350 IOPS and this is 9000 plus <laughs> so again there is a difference and the um, again you can see here the read and write speeds are very similar across the board of different sizes of file reads and writes whereas the cheap 32 gig the write speeds generally tended to stick around this bottom end of the graph now I'm going to do the same test again. I'm going to take, save a screenshot of this because you can, that's one thing I do like about this, you can save a screenshot out to the desktop. And we'll call this Evo IDE. And I will put this on one of the onboard SATA connectors, SATA channels, and we'll rerun this test again. after I've eaten some cake. Okay, so we're back again. Got the Evo selected. Drive D. And we're gonna run the, the speed test again. And again, this is quite interesting because we're capped around the 230 to 240 mark. And you can see the read and writes are much closer together now. But again, this is a very telltale sign when, when a transfer rate is very straight and flat like this, it's usually an indication of a bottleneck. And in this case, it's actually going to be the onboard SATA connector because these are only SATA 2. Now, they should in theory be able to do 300 megasecond, but in actual real world terms, generally that's not what you're going to get. So it's almost certainly this that's now the bottleneck because this drive can do at least double that. But it has proven what I was saying, that the IDE adapter is causing a false cap of around 70 to 80 megabytes a second. So even though your modern mechanical drives, some of them can now easily hit 180 megabytes a second. I'm not, not sure if this one can, but we'll try this one. If you're using them through one of these adapters, you are going to hit some serious bottlenecks with the transfer rate. But for booting an operating system, you don't necessarily need that raw transfer rate. You're not loading gigabytes of memory when you're loading an OS, even if it's Windows. I mean, you know, yes, Windows takes up a lot more memory, but it's not loading hundreds and hundreds of megabytes of gigabytes into RAM. It, the main factor with the boot speed and the responsiveness of a PC when you're using an SSD over a mechanical disk it's just the access time it's the fact that these can access various points of the drive so to speak or the RAM significantly faster than a mechanical drive can and that's what makes all the difference so even though this is a cheap low-spec SSD it's still perfectly good 
in particular in this purpose for booting the OS up and you know basic use. I probably wouldn't want to use it in an everyday desktop PC because the write speed's pretty slow and I don't know how well that that drive will last over time in terms of where if you're writing to it all the time. But on a system like this, I'm not going to be writing to it much, if at all. It will just be the OS writing to it when it needs to. So it's perfectly adequate for this. So I've put the Toshiba mechanical drive on now. I've initialized it as before, formatted partition, just with a quick format. We'll run HD Tune again. Uh, we're on benchmark, it's got the right drive selected. And again here you can see quite a fairly flat transfer rate. Now it, it would be fair to assume that that's probably again a bottleneck cap but I don't think it is because that's below the 200 megasecond transfer rate and we know that the SSD did 240 so this is probably more the drive and we're obviously getting these extra bursts that are peaking above that. Interestingly they're capped at around the 240 mark so that's probably again the uh, controller capping that. This bit here is the hard drive and, and often with hard drives you'll get these steps as, you, as further you go into the disk or further along um, you'll find that the transfer rate will eventually step down and down and down and it, it tends to reduce towards the end of the drive. I think on some of the very old drives it was actually the other way around you've got the slower transfer rate at the start and the faster transfer rate at the end. But even this drive, the IOPS is higher than it is on that cheap SSD. So what would be interesting to do is to image this system drive onto this one and do a comparison of how quick one boots up next to the other one. Um, purely for the sake of completeness, I've now plugged the mechanical drive in through the IDE to SATA adapter and pretty much as expected. It's capping out around the 70 to 80 meg mark on the writes and the, the 80 meg mark on the reads. Exactly as I expected. Now before I forget, again, the chipset on these red ones, which isn't very good, it's a Sun Plus IT SATA Link SPI or SP1, I'm not entirely sure which it is, F2 23A is what's on the chipset. It's also got a dash HL022 on the end. I don't know if that's part of the model number or not. The blue ones on the right here, they're a JM20330, and I think JM is actually the company make or logo as well that's on here. I'll try and put some close ups on the screen of these so that they're easier to see. Don't assume if you're going to buy these on eBay that if it's a red one it's bad or a blue one it's good. In fact I would go as far as to say don't assume just because the picture's got the appropriate chipset on that you're going to get that one. Uh, these are very, usually very cheap on there and they just seem to use a lot of stock images. If anything at least check the description so the description shows you what chipset that you, you should be getting and then at least that way if you get something that's a different chipset you've got some recourse to say well this isn't what I ordered. Okay so I nearly forgot to do this but I ran another experiment and I've cloned the 32 gig SSD to both the Samsung Evo and the Toshiba mechanical drive and I've tried booting both of those up from one of the red SATA ID adapters on the IDE port. Now the Evo did seem to be a little bit better than the 32 gig drive, the King DN, Diane, however you say it. However, it did still suffer from this locking up and just generally being not quite right. And it took a while for the PC to shut down. So very similar, slightly better, but very similar. The Toshiba drive, on the other hand, has worked exactly as it should. It's booted up not had any problems, it doesn't seem to lock up. Yeah, the performance is pretty poor as you can see from the screen. And again, it does seem to have a, you can see from the up and down waviness here, it does seem to have quite a significant impact on the transfer rate abilities of whatever drives attached to it. 
but it hasn't gone all laggy it hasn't been a bit odd and a bit off and it shuts down reasonably quick for a mechanical hard drive so what that's now suggesting to me is not so much that these are no good but maybe these particular chipsets are not fully compatible with SSDs whereas perhaps the ones from this chipset are there's perhaps a little bit more um, compatibility with these so that might be the issue so it's not necessarily that these are completely written off it's just a matter of using them perhaps for what they were intended for which is actually <laughs> convert a mechanical hard drive to a, a SATA port so thinking about it a bit more now these angled ones are specifically designed for converting IDE hard drives to be ultimately a SATA hard drive that's the whole point this bit plugs into the back of the drive and then you run a, a splitter cable one goes to the power here the other one goes to your hard drive and then you've got your soft port on the back of the drive and these are obviously quite nice for that because they're low profile and these Lindy ones in particular are nice because they've bothered to put an insulative foam layer on the back so that it doesn't short out on the back of the drive which is you know nice and very considerate and I've just done a shutdown from Windows using this mechanical drive connected through the IDE port and it shut down pretty much straight away two three seconds and it was shutting down and then it was gone so it definitely confirms to me that there's some kind of issue with the SSDs and these particular adapters so what I thought I'd do finally seeing as I've already wasted so much time on this is just do a boot up time for each of the drives uh, slightly different situations but what I'm going to do is the 32 gig both on the IDE and on the onboard SATA and then I'm going to run the Toshiba mechanical drive and the Samsung mechanical drive each of those on the onboard SATAs as well so they're, they'll be running at their best and then this I'll be running at its best on the onboard and just to see if there's any real difference between the onboard and the IDE that's notable So what have we learned? Well the cake was nice and that's gone. Cheap low capacity SSDs do have a use. Some SATA adapters don't work with SSD drives. One of my SATA adapters is dead and a couple of them they're not the best of performers but they do work and they work with both mechanical drives and SSDs. So hopefully this video has been of some use to somebody uh, especially as I say finding out that these aren't all compatible with SSDs or they work but they don't work very well at all there's clearly issues hopefully that will help somebody out there. Now I know what's going on I can carry on getting this system built up and doing my disc checking that I've got to do.